So we're going to talk about another way that we can classify events, mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive. So with mutually exclusive events, the occurrence of one outcome precludes the occurrence of another. So rolling a five and rolling a six are mutually exclusive because you can't roll them both at the same time. But rolling a six and rolling an even number are non-mutually exclusive events because there's an intersection between the two. So when you're calculating the probability for mutually exclusive events, the probability of P of A or B occurring is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. So it's pretty simple standard compared to what we've been doing. So with non-mutually exclusive events, the probability of A or B occurring is a bit more complicated because we have to take into account the intersection where both events happen at the same time. So the probability of A or B happening is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus them both happening. So I'll give a couple of examples to make this make more sense. Say at a department store, 80% of the shirts are blue and 50% are striped and 60% are blue and striped. So what's the probability of getting a shirt that's either just blue or just striped? So first we think, are these mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive? Well, since there's an intersection where you can be both blue and striped, that means that it's non-mutually exclusive. So to find the probability, we set it up. So P of blue or striped is equal to the probability of it being blue plus the probability of it being striped minus the intersection, 0 0.6. So 0 0.8 plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.6 equals 0 0.7. So that means there's a 70% chance that a shirt you pick is either going to be blue or striped. Now let's go to another example. Say at a car dealership, 30% of the cars are convertibles, 28% are minivans. Is this mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive? Well, you can't have a minivan that's also a convertible, so that means it's mutually exclusive. So to find the probability that you get a minivan or a convertible, you just add up the two probabilities. So it equals 0 0.28 plus 0 0.3, which equals 0 0.58, which means you have a 58% chance of getting a van or a convertible. So we're just going to talk about odds. Odds are similar to probability, except they deal with ratios instead of fractions. So the odds in favor of an event A occurring is just the probability of A occurring as a ratio to the probability of A not occurring. And the odds against A occurring is just the opposite, the probability of A not occurring as a ratio to the probability of A. So if you're given odds and you need to convert to probability, so if the odds in favor of A occurring are H as a ratio to K, then the probability of A occurring is H over H plus K. All right, we'll just do a quick example. Let's say the odds in favor of the Leafs winning the Stanley Cup are 200 to 1. What's the probability that the Leafs don't win the Stanley Cup. So since they give us odds in favor and we're looking for the probability that they lose, we need to flip it into odds against. So 200 to 1 becomes 1 to 200. And now we use this formula to convert it. So we have H to K, 1 to 200. So we have 1 over 200 plus 1. So 1 over 201. And that's the probability that the Leafs win the Cup. Let's say we want to find the odds in favor of rolling a 6 using a single die. So we use this formula. The probability of getting a 6 is 1 over 6. One, there's only one desired outcome of 6 and 6 total outcomes. So the odds in favor is just the probability of a 6 as a ratio to the probability of not a 6. So we have 1 over 6 to 5 over 6. And if we multiply it out to get rid of the denominators, the odds in favor of a 6 are 1 to 5.